Welcome to this Click Explains Finance video. This week, how does stock screening work? Now, there are loads of ways to screen stock stocks, but people sometimes say to me, where do you start? What is it? And also, people often don't understand quite how much can go into it. So I want to paint a picture here of what's involved. Then you may decide to leave it to somebody else or roll your sleeves up and have a go. So background as usual, successful investment requires a degree of focus. There's a huge universe of stocks out there of things to buy. How do you whittle them down to something you can choose from and create a portfolio from? All right? And investors are constantly bombarded with new ideas. So you've got to be disciplined. You've got to have the willpower to say, no, this is my process. This is what I'm looking for. This is what I'm sticking to. And not be sort of wooed by the latest advert, wherever it appears, for a particular stock or story. And a stock screen basically helps you to do that. It helps you to strip out noise and generate what I call a shortlist if you're looking to, say, build a manageable portfolio. You're not going to hold everything in the market. Um, you're going to hold a few select stocks. So Walmart versus Costco is a good illustration of the point I'm about to make about stock screening. Less is more. So Walmart sells decent volumes of a lot of product lines. You've heard the name. You know what they do. They stock almost, it seems, sometimes one of everything. Costco sell huge volumes of a much smaller range of items. So basically, they're both successful retailers in, in one sense, but they have very different strategies. And Costco's return on invested capital is around 28% versus 12 for Walmart. Now, 12 is decent, don't get me wrong, but 28 is considerably higher. So that focus, which is what we're talking about here, allows Costco to sell pretty much sometimes identical items. It's just they do it a different way. It's the stuff you leave out that matters, therefore, says Jason Fried, order of, author of Rework. And stock screening is as much about stripping out the stuff that doesn't meet your criteria as it is about actively including stuff, although obviously the two are linked. Now, the holy grail, if you like. So what is the idea behind all this? Well, we want high-quality businesses in our portfolio. We want owner-oriented management, that is, owners who are thinking about you, the shareholder, not lining their own pockets. If you get a happy coincidence of the two, well, that's great, but that's what you want. And a compelling valuation. In other words, you want to pay a reasonable price for good companies, as Ben Graham, amongst others, put it many, many years ago. So here's a four-stage screen. Now, is this the only stock screen? Absolutely not. But here is an example. So you can actually get a feel for those people who are new to this as to what a stock screen comprises and, and sort of what goes into building one. So a four-stage screen would be what? First of all, a good idea. Now, a good idea is not just these people are really onto something. It's also about, do I understand what they're onto? There's no point in buying stocks you don't really understand because you're never going to know why they're performing well or badly. Financial stability is important. Now, not to everybody. Some people would say it's a very cautious stock screen. But financial stability is important, I think, in building a portfolio. A wide moat. Now, I've covered that in other videos, more about that in a moment. Something about the business that makes it difficult for other people to just copy and blow it out of the water, if you like, and a decent price. Now, all of these things are subjective. If you're looking for absolute science on this, there is some judgment involved, but there's also some, some numeric work you can do to underpin it too. So, taking those in turn, a good idea is as much about do I get what's going on here as it is about, do I think these people are onto something? So I'm going to keep this very, very brief. There's a lot of work that goes in behind every single point on these slides. Is the business simple? It doesn't have to be ridiculously simple. You know, if you're an astrophysicist, you can afford to get your hands dirty in businesses that are perhaps specializing in quite complex fields involving physics. But for a lot of people, that would be, I don't really understand it. Do I understand how it works? Do you understand? what the product is, how it makes money, how much money it makes. Or if this is a business going for a land grab, all right, do you understand at what point it will start generating cash, when it will start making profits, if ever? And are its products and services well defined? All right? In other words, can you see some distance between its products and services and those of its competitors? All right, what's the pipeline of new products? Is it a one-trick pony? all those things. Lots of questions underpin every single one of these. I'm just giving you a flavour. Well, that's part one. Part two, I said, is financial stability. Now, there's a lot of work you can do here, but let's boil it down to sales and profits growth. Now, 
new economy stock owners would say, oh, you don't need profit yet. It's all about the future. It's all about land grab. Mm, I'm less convinced. I'm not such a big unicorn fan as they're known as some other people are. So as I like to see sales and profits growth. Asset turnover rising. That suggests that the business is getting more bang per invested buck as time goes by. Positive and growing cash flow. Now again, people accuse me of being very conservative. You know, some businesses burn cash in the early days in order to grow. Yes, but I'm not desperately keen on them usually. And a clean balance sheet. More about that in just a moment. So have a look for consistency over several periods. Sales and profit growth, not just last year, not just the forecast. Okay, you see a lot of that in Dragon's Den, people coming in and saying, well, we've grown for 18 months. What's not to like? I want to see consistent pattern five, maybe even seven years, if you can get it. Five-year summaries are at least a good starting point. An ability to beat competitors consistently. So look at the numbers, return on invested capital, gross margins, and so on. Cover these in other videos. And strong brand with proven pricing power. So this is a business that has shown its ability to hold onto juicy gross and, say, operating profit margins, for example. A wide moat. Remember, there are four points back at the beginning of this video. So a wide moat is what? Now, again, there's lots I could say about this, but the ability to maintain pricing power. What is it about this business that stops competitors coming in, just selling the same thing for half the price and annihilating their profit margins? You need an answer to that. Are customers sticky? In other words, is it easy for customers to switch to a competitor should they choose to do such a thing? Or actually, is there something about this business that kind of locks people in and keeps them interested. And can you see off competition? Now that can come, you know, have you got a decent war chest? Is this a business that's big and established and can just buy up the competition? Is there a regulatory reason why competitors can't just come in? All right, um, maybe it's R&D spend. Maybe this company is able to outspend its competitors, but you need something. Evidence that the business can basically maintain its competitive advantage. And finally, price. Factor number four, buying stuff that's good, we understand it, strong, financially stable, at a good price. So we're looking for a reasonable valuation. There are various ways of doing that, All right? Price to sales, price to book, depends on the industry, depends on the sector, price to earnings, and so on. You want a margin of safety and a capacity to suffer. Terry Smith, the, the successful fund manager, talks about this. If this business or the economy generally hits a bump in the road, is this company cushioned against that? Does it have the margins that can absorb potential problems, dips in sales, for example? And does management have a track record? I'm not a big fan of companies that bring in somebody who doesn't have any experience in the sector on the basis they might as well spin the wheel and just see if somebody can turn the business around. You want a proven track record. Innovative, yes, but completely left field, I would say no. To find out more, it's a massive topic and I've skimmed the surface of it there. To find out more about stock screening, editor at killick.com and to watch videos on some of those things I mentioned, operating margins, gross margins, PE ratios, price to sales, all of that good stuff, it's killick.com forward slash learn and you want the ratios tab or the shares tab or on YouTube, you can search us, Killick and Co and put the title into the search bar.